What, what do you think is going to be tough about it? The tough about it is you're going through the desert. Mm. Okay, Death Valley, Nevada, whatever. You're going to see miles and miles. Nobody's there. I'm riding on a one-man wheel car, cause I'm built analog, 36 inches of cycle across the USA. I don't know what the hell I'm gonna get myself into, into, yeah. My name's Ed, and I'm riding a unicycle around the world. Join me on this series as I attempt to cycle 4,000 miles across the United States of America. Okay. Should I start? You should start, yeah. I should start, okay. I'll get you riding off into the sunset. I'm riding to the sunset. The sun is already almost there. Okay. <laughs> See you, man. Bye. Bye, Ed. After saying farewell to Bobby, that evening, not wanting to camp in the freshly planted rows of almond trees, I asked if I could pitch my tent in the garden of a family's home. They very kindly agreed. The next morning, I carried on pedaling through the many acres of farmland that surrounded Bakersfield. Wow, the landscape's changed. I was in the mountains yesterday. <laughs> I haven't had all that much flat riding. Uh, but today, I'm heading to a place called Bakersfield, and I'm staying with a guy called Brian. But before I met Brian, I still had about 40 miles to cover. Making the most of the quiet road I found myself on, I decided to have another attempt at capturing some unicycle drone shots. I took the spark up, parked it in the sky, and then mounted my unicycle. This time, I'd give up on the disappointing automatic tracking function and fly the drone manually while also trying to keep my balance. What could possibly go wrong? Once I felt steady, I pulled out the controller from my back pocket and attempted to keep myself in frame. It kind of worked. Until, inevitably, I became just a little bit too confident. Uh, almost hit a telegraph pole or a electricity pole or whatever you call them. That, that wasn't so good. <laughs> I think I was very, very lucky there. That evening, I arrived in Bakersfield. Brian, who had been following me online, had come out on his bike to see me in the last few miles. Brian, what do I need to know about um, Bakersfield? We have a lot of crazy drivers here. Really? Yes. <laughs> because this was the last major town I'd see until Las Vegas, I plan to take a couple of days off the unicycle and follow Bobby's advice of preparing myself for the long desert crossing ahead. The first job was to fix my tent zips. Having problems with this tent recently. And no, the problem wasn't that it pitched itself automatically. That would be amazing, wouldn't it? No, the real issue was that the runner no longer held the door shut, resulting in many irritating insects finding my face during the night. I first tried borrowing a pair of pliers and squeezing the runners back together. All right, <laughs> that didn't work. The next idea was Brian's, lubricating the zips with silicon. Look at this, look at this. It's good, hopefully that holds for a little bit. The second job was to try and fluff up my sleeping bag. I've been getting a bit cold in my sleeping bag recently, so I'm hoping that by throwing it in the dryer and kind of knocking it up, that it knocks the down back into shape, then hopefully I'll have some warmer nights. Thirdly was to make the long hours on the road ahead more comfortable. Now, it's not something that I speak about all that often, but saddle sores have been a constant struggle for me over my entire Around the World tour. Chafing, swellings, infections, you name it, I've probably suffered it while unicycling. I've tried a variety of different saddles, even ones that I've modified myself to reduce the pain, but nothing's really worked, and I've always had to deal with a certain amount of discomfort on the road. For whatever reason, on this leg across the US, the chafing had become particularly bad, and I just needed a change. Luckily for me, the USA branch of Unicycle.com was on my side, and as soon as I told them the issues I was facing, they quickly sent me out a new saddle. So this is the KH Fusion Zero. This is my old one. This is the new one. It's quite a big difference. Um, obviously this one's a hell of a lot, of a lot flatter. Um, so I'm hoping the profile of this one will just sort of help my bum out a little bit and just give me a bit of a change because I've been really struggling recently. So I'm hoping this will give me my bum a little bit of a rest. We will see. And with the new saddle installed, the next day I loaded up the panniers and I was all set to leave Bakersfield. But not before giving my unicycle a quick weigh-in. 
90 pounds. My unicycle is currently 90 pounds. Um, that's about 41 kilograms. And that's very, very heavy. <laughs> really packed up with a lot of food yesterday. That's the reason it's got so much weight on it at the moment. Um, the good news is that that weight will soon be reduced as I eat more food. But we've got probably two weeks of desert riding towards Vegas coming up, heading towards Death Valley. And there's a lot of nothingness in California in this stretch. Uh, so that's the reason I've put so much uh, food on the unicycle. And with that, I thanked Brian for generously opening up his home to me, and I was finally ready to head off towards Death Valley. Oops, <laughs> one second, uh, heavy unicycle. Let's try that again. And now I was ready to head off towards Death Valley. Well, half a mile past county line where the road was dark. Slip into the night to see those fireflies spark and I tried to tell you so. Um, in order to get to Death Valley, I need to uh, go on the 178 from Bakersfield. And that takes me northwest through a canyon, which looks absolutely stunning. I'm just coming up to it now. And um, oh my. <laughs> Met, I was standing in the rain. I was coming home from Portland trying to catch the last train. You mistook me for a lover when I asked you your name. Never stopped for long enough, let me explain. Every time there's a moment I can speak, Lord, she fills it up by talking in her sleep. She goes. Tries so hard just to say that I love her, but she just keeps going on and on and on and on and on. On and on and on. I'm regressing buying so much food. 41 kilos. I'll remind you, that's what that weighs. Um, we're not even halfway up the gorge um, and it's going to be, I'm losing the sun, it's going to drop behind the mountain pretty soon in the next 10 minutes. Uh, there's a turn off to the right in about three miles, so I'm trying to get to that and I'm hoping somewhere there there'll be a good place to camp. But yeah, losing the sun, that sun is going to disappear pretty shortly. Shattered from the day's climbing and conscious of how dangerous this road seemed, I stepped off the unicycle and pushed it the final few miles in search of somewhere to sleep. Don't want to wait every week for the next episode? Head over to Vimeo and watch the entire four and a half hour series from San Fran to New York right now. You'll find the link in the description. Thank you. Now back to the episode. Now, I don't know about you, but when I think of cowboys, this is what I picture. A slightly dodgy bunch of shabby, gunslinging, cattle herding men straight out of the old westerns. That night, a mile or so off the main road, I spotted a small campfire up in the hills. Soon after introducing myself, I was handed a beer and invited to sit around it by this friendly group of modern day cowboys. The nights of sleeping rough in bivy sacks were gone, it seemed, to be replaced, at least in this case, with gigantic heated caravans. They were all a little bemused by my unconventional form of transport, but very supportive of my trip and happy to trade stories. Leroy told me a little about his time as a rodeo. Thank you, you know, if the guy's yeah. gonna do what you're doing, <laughs> it's the time to do it. it I think a, so, that's yeah. That's the time oh, to do it. Because, you know, we got kids and the wife, you know, that shit ain't gonna happen. <laughs> you're gonna thing. what? Yeah. <laughs> no. I've got no ties, you know? Yeah, which is, right on. Which is nice. That's cool, you know, I. I, I, when I was rodeo and I did a little, but you know, here in the United States, but just, just getting out of your element is, it's fun. You want to get out there, you know, it, Absolutely. Yeah. there's some shady people out there, but there's some good people too. You know, you, mean, you, you were rodeoing when I was younger. Yeah. Out of yeah. high school, Hank too. We, he, we rode bulls and <laughs> team roped a little bit. And I never did try to buck on horses though. I just weren't, wasn't that talented. Any, uh, any injuries? Oh yeah. Shoulder, oh, knee. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no teeth, knocked out. all my teeth out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Whoa. Are they all, um... I mean, these are teeth, but they're, they're not mine. <laughs> <laughs> you nicked them from someone. <laughs>
But yeah, when I was younger. I mean, and how long have you been doing this? Uh, all my life, yeah. Ranching all my life. Cowboying. I don't know. I don't know anything different, man. Just. But but I I like I like I like this. I like. Yeah. You know. We awoke to light snowfall. Last night, I'd said I was happy to set my tent up by the fire, but seeing the ice on the ground the next morning, I was very grateful these guys insisted I take one of the caravan's spare sofas. I packed up my unicycle, while the guys prepared themselves and the horses for the day's cattle drive. You get you one of these, you'd be in New York in no time at all. <laughs> Won't even break a sweat. <laughs> While putting on their chaps, I noticed Richie holstering a pistol. I asked him why he carried it. No, yeah, for what, like real wild, dangerous cattle. Yeah, but we don't we don't have to do that very often. Maybe a couple times a year. Soon, we were all just about ready to set off. Me eastwards towards the desert, and the ranchers into the snow-dusted hills to herd their cattle. Thank you very much. Okay, All right, see you, Leroy. Okay, you. Good luck with it. As I continued my journey, I felt very honoured that our paths had crossed. Before beginning my unicycle ride across the States, I'd only hoped to have authentic experiences and meet honest people. So far, the USA had certainly delivered. And camping in some woods with some cowboys? Well, I just don't think it gets any more authentically American than that. Thank you all 80 of you that are currently supporting me on Patreon. Um, you support what I do and the production of my content uh, and in return you get to see my videos a week early. So I think that's a pretty good deal. Um, and I want to say a particularly big thank you to Elijah Legenda, Mark Paris, Mark C, uh, Andrew Thomas, Kelly Jackson, Kentaro Sakino, and Derek Donovan. Um, you're all supporting me on the third tier. Um, I record this segment every week. So if you'd like to be involved in this little segment, uh, head over to my Patreon page and you can find more information there. Thank you very much. The next day, I arrived at the base of Bird Spring Pass. This is where I'll be crossing over my final section of the Sierra Nevada mountain range and officially entering the Mojave Desert. I knew the next few days were gonna be brutal, but I was looking forward to it. <laughs> oh! Okay, you mark my words. This is gonna be a mistake. Uh, I wasn't, I, I thought Bird Spring Pass was going to be paved. It's not paved. Um, <laughs> and it's probably, possibly going to be 25 miles until I see another paved section of road. I'm too stubborn to turn back, so I'm just going to head down this, this path. Uh, it's going to be a lot of walking. <laughs> and anyway, yeah, this is going to be a mistake. This is going to be a massive mistake. But to see how I get on traveling alone through the Mojave Desert, you'll have to come back next time. If you're feeling impatient and can't wait for next week's video, you're in luck because the next episode is available right now on my Patreon. And if you're feeling really impatient, you can head over to Vimeo and watch the entire Ed Unicycles the USA series from start to finish over there. Your support is greatly appreciated. Well, this old thing ain't built for speed, but I love my trusty dusty speed. It'll get me around the world soon, then I'll try a full moon. I know my route is roundabout, but I sure as hell don't have a doubt. It'll get me where I'm going, as long as the wind is blowing. I'm well aware of dangers out there, and it's not that I don't.